One of the hardest parts of setting up a new shop is trying to figure out how you want your dust collection, uh, how to set it up, what size pipe to use, do you want to use pipe? Um, there's just a ton of different things that go into it and you pretty much have to know where all of your tools are going to be before you can even start to run. I'm going to show you how I ran mine. Now this is just me, this is my preference, but maybe able to help you out a little bit. So to start, I'm just going to give you a basic walkthrough of my system and how it's set up. Okay, so I have a table saw. I actually have a four tool grouping in the center of the shop. I'm actually going to do a video on that, on the benefits of that. Um, but for right now, the dust collection, we'll just kind of walk around and check that out. Okay, so as you can see, I have six inch trunk line coming out of this room over here. It comes across, down, and then once I get to this point, that is where we start to reduce down to our four inch and then to our machines. So let's see what's actually powering this. And you may be a little surprised, but it's only a two horsepower unit. It is mounted above. So it's a straight shot into my shop. And the out feed is a four inch line that runs to the outside. Okay, so that may be a little different than what you're used to seeing. Most people with small shops like this or garage shops or anything like that, they're dead set on having their dust collection inside. There's no need for your outfeed to go into a bag or to go into a filter or go into a cyclone. Um, Unless you live in a city or some place where you have really close neighbors and maybe there's an ordinance against that or, or however. But the best way to get the least amount of resistance with the dust collection system is to have it ran outside. Anytime that you have a cyclone, anytime that you have anything in between your outfeed, let's say like even your filtration bag, it's going to create resistance. So now that you've had a basic overview of kind of how things are, are laid out, let's dive deeper into each section. And at the end, we'll actually do a test on the planer. This planer, uh, it's just a 12 inch planer, but I actually have this designed. So whenever I get my 20 inch planer converted over um, to single phase, then I'll be able to uh, put it over here actually with two six inch drops. So let's get started with the motor. Like I mentioned, one motor, two horsepower, runs the entire shop, 220, and feeds out the side. I didn't want to be climbing up and down or going in and out of this room uh, to start my dust collection. So I wired it up so I can actually start my dust collection from out here. So just flip the switch and we have suction. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this back off for now just so I can talk about a couple of things. Like I mentioned, I came straight out of my wall, had built a platform for my uh, dust collector and I'm running straight six inch trunk line over to my bank. So this is what comes on your dust collection system. It's a splitter. So that six inch port that comes right off of the side of the dust collection automatically splits into four inch dust collection pipe. Okay, so this is already set up. So you can go ahead and you can put your flex line or however and connect it directly to your dust collector. But that is automatically splitting in half your CFMs from the very beginning. So I wanted to do completely away with this 
and I connected directly into my dust collector. The only reason why dust collectors come with this already on them is because industry on mid-industrial equipment picked up and they've used four inch ports as their standard. Even though there's a lot of this equipment that really should have a six inch port, they've used four inch ports. So dust collection companies followed suit, put this onto their machine, and this is where you get your split. Be fine if you only have a couple of pieces of equipment, but if you're wanting to run your whole garage or your whole shop, run it all off of one unit, you gotta get rid of this and thing. And then it breaks off into two branches, reduces to four, and drops down to two blast gates. Okay, so for the right leg of my trunk line drop down, have it going to a dedicated blast gate, and then I actually have one of these Rockler um, adapters that I was telling you about to get plenty of, um, and they work perfect for interchanging between two pieces of equipment. So I don't actually have to have two drops. You know, every drop that you have is gonna decrease uh, your, your suction. I can just use this one, hook it up to my joiner, snap dry it in, I can use my joiner, or hook it up to my sander. I put the sander on a mobile base, that way I can move it around and I left plenty of this flex line, that way I can, I can actually move it out and use it if needed. From our trunk line, we then 45 up. Again, you want to use as many 45s as you can. Any type of 90, any type of 45, any type of fitting uh, will actually reduce the amount of suction that you would get. So 45, just to get this into the rafters and out of the way six inch trunk line, and this is all sewer grade PVC. I have a starting point video on that, uh, what all you need, the different fittings. And then I come down my center pole, and this is where we actually start to reduce. It's always better to, I guess, overrun or be prepared for any add-ons. Another thing, especially if you're using PVC like like I did, do not glue it up. There's no need to glue it up. It creates its own vacuum in these fittings and actually sucks itself together. You'll see some places that I have taped up. Um, a lot of people believe that uh, you don't even need that. A lot of my major joints, I went ahead and uh, just put some very thick, kind of like Gorilla duct tape. Okay, so the reason why I chose this design as far as having my grouping of tools here is I wanted to keep them as close to the trunk line as I could for my drops. Uh, anytime that you reduce the size of your pipes in your drops, you're going to reduce your uh, CFMs uh, or your flow. So with this setup, I was able to keep my trunk line and my main bank only about 15 feet away from my dust collector. I wanted to make sure to keep the machinery that will need the most CFMs kind of close together and as close to my dust collector as possible in order to get the suction that I needed. I'm thinking that uh, your average CFMs that you look for, you know, is 350 to 400 and all of this stuff, I'll throw up a little chart here. You can copy, save that however, or you can just find it online. Pretty much standard on most equipment, it's gonna be 350 to, to 400 uh, CFMs or suction um, in order for everything to, to work right. There are a few tools that need more, your planer, your shaper, joiner, those type of woodworking tools need more suction. Uh, so the closer to the dust collector that you can get those, the better. With this setup, everything pretty much except for the miter saw is really close. All right, so like I was saying, each tool has its own independent blast gauge. 
All right, so while I'm on the topic of blast gates, there is a correct and incorrect way of installing a metal blast gate. It's an issue that I ran into, learned the hard way, let me show you. So this is the correct way to install a metal blast gate. The knob should be on the bottom. The reason why is because when you tighten this, this knob, you actually want to push that plate up. That way it seals that. If you do it like this one, which I will have to take out and turn around, if you tighten this knob, it pushes this plate down and actually creates an air gap. So you lose air there. Now you know what not to do. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Okay, so like I was saying, each piece of equipment has its own individual blast gate. Um, most of the time I'm gonna be working by myself. I'm gonna have one piece of equipment going at a time. I only need one thing open. So for instance, if I have blast gates shutting everything off, I open up the very bottom one, which is gonna be my table saw, then we still have full amount of suction, plenty of suction to actually operate both dust ports that's on this table saw. And then with every kickoff that I have for a new piece of equipment, I'm actually using a Y connector. You always want to keep your angle flowing up towards where it is going out. And also, anytime that you need to make a turn, bend, anything like that, if you can, use 45s, because they, they reduce the, the CFM drag. Um, and then if you do use a 90, make sure to use a sweeping 90 or a long 90. But we try to avoid these as much as possible. And then from the blast gate, on each piece of equipment, I have flex line. This is just so I can move the equipment around a little bit if I need to. I can disconnect, add more flex hose, but I wanted to use as minimal amount of flex hose as possible. I needed a, the most CFMs that I could get in order to run this hose shop off of one unit. And there's a lot of different uh, things that you can use for dust collection. You can run everything in a dust collection pipe. I chose to use PVC. It's easy to work with, very smooth insides. You can find all of these different, uh, different angles, different types of adapters for that. But the problem is retrofitting PVC to fit dust collection. If you watched my last video on kind of where to start or must haves for running a PVC dust collection system, trust me, the adapters that I had you to pick up I mean, they're lifesavers. These Rockler PVC to dust collection uh, adapters, I have, I have them everywhere. Any place that I use a blast gate, you're gonna see one of these. Just made it so much easier to, uh, to hook up. Okay, so we're at our combo here. I wanted to get it further up, so I used 45s and what's holding all of this to the wall um, they're just little brackets that you can buy with the pvc and then we go over and down all right so the miter saw like i had said i'm not happy with this is my longest run this is probably 50 feet but i'm not happy with everything that i've had to do to reduce down so like i learned Dust collection is a pain in the butt. I mean, just to be blunt, I mean, it is. Because nothing matches. Standard PVC does not match, match dust collection pipe. Uh, the flex pipe, you know, it does not fit over your standard PVC. The blast gates don't match up, all of this stuff. So, I'm not happy with this. For one thing, it's kind of a battle anyway with a miter saw just because it produces so much dust and it kind of throws it around. The RPMs of this thing is so fast that it exceeds the RPMs of the motor trying to suck away the dust. So there's no way that it can. And then dropping from a four inch pipe and then reducing down 
to a one and a half inch, maybe two inch flex pipe. It's just not enough to carry it away. So I'm not happy with that. So I've designed this to be temporary, or at least this part. Everything will just kind of come off, hook back up, until I can get a miter saw station built. Um, with that miter saw station, I'll be able to put in like a down draft box that will be able to catch everything that is thrown into it that will work out a heck of a lot better. The things that I want you to take away from this video, these were the biggest things that I ran into. And I told you, uh, if you watched the last video, you know, I kind of explain some different things that are issues that I ran into. We've already discussed the blast gates. Keep in mind, blast gates, at least the metal ones, have a direction. If you decide to use the metal ones, always make sure that the little knob is down, okay? The fittings, these are the, uh, the ones that I showed you in the previous video. Um, I'll link them down in this one as well. Make sure to get plenty of those. Draw everything out. You need to get your equipment in place in your shop where you want it, where you want to use it, and then draw everything out. You need to measure everything. You need to see what your furthest run is going to be. And then there's actually online calculators for calculating uh, the CFMs, um, putting in static drag, everything comes into play with this. So utilize those tools. Also, have some heavy duty maybe one inch and also four inch or three inch, whatever duct tape or gorilla tape is. Get the thick stuff, all right? Um, not just your standard thin duct tape, but it actually works out great for sealing the inside. And this is what we actually did on these blast gates is around each one of these blast gate bases, if I'm gonna put PVC to the blast gate, tell you the truth, I ran out of those little connectors that I'm like talking all about, buy a bunch of them. I didn't buy enough. So I didn't buy enough of the uh, connectors. So to remedy that, I had to make a gasket essentially. So I took the one inch uh, Gorilla Tape and I actually wrapped it around the inside of the blast gate and slid my PVC over the top of it and it actually created a great seal. Um, I think it was maybe one time around, maybe twice around, and it creates a perfect seal for that. I can't find any leaks yet. So that's a tip. Make sure to pick up some of these brackets. These little metal brackets, they're cheap. Make sure to pick up some for your four inch line. Now the six inch trunk line, if you're, going to, if you're going to do that, as you can see, I have those strapped to the uh, rafters. Do not glue, do not glue up your PVC. What if you wanna move it? What if you wanna to add to it? What if you don't like the way that, uh, you know, this leg is, is kicking out? You know, like I mentioned, I'm going to be replacing this with a 20 inch planer. You know, it's gonna have two six inch ports that's gonna to have to come up. So I won't even need this leg anymore. I don't wanna to have to come in here, cut it all off, cap it and do all that stuff whenever I can just disconnect. So now that we've talked about the assembly and some tips, tricks, things like that, let's actually see what kind of suction that this thing has with that two horsepower motor. Okay. So dust collection is on. Let's see what kind of suction we have. First, we'll come right off of our trunk line and we'll just do this little drop here just since it's convenient. And there you have it. Listen to that suction. A lot of suction. What I'm gonna use is just shavings. It's actually more dust. Okay, so that's good, but you know, this is how close we are. Let's get a little further away 
and see how we do there. Okay, so we are back at our main trunk. And you can hear the suction. I mean, you can hear the suction. It's great. Let's close that one off. Open up. Drum sander is split here. Still plenty of suction. I can actually feel the suction from here. Close that off. We'll come around to shaver. So a shaver is a tool that you're going to need the most, or one of the most CFMs for, just because of the, uh, the mount that is taking off, kind of like a planer. So even with a four inch flex line, You can see that it does a tremendous job. Now, if this whole system was ran in four inch, I do not believe that we would have this kind of uh, results. So let's check out our longest run and actually see how that does. And then after that, we are actually going to fire up the planer, which creates the most amount of big, heavy shavings and see how it does. Okay, so this is the longest run We're probably at 50, maybe a little over 50 feet here. And again, having to reduce down. So I'm just gonna take this off. So you can hear it. And see how it does just at this point. And we've reduced down to about two inches here. Watch, you suck your arm in that thing. All right, so that's our longest run. You can see that it handles the dust pretty well. Um, actually handles the dust great. So let's fire up the planer. Even though this is a small planer, that's probably gonna put off the most amount of sawdust, thick, heavy sawdust, than anything else in the shop. So, this is my dust collection. I hope that you guys enjoy this, that you could learn something from it, take it away, learn from some of my mistakes. Hopefully it gives you some insight into your space, uh, be it garage, be it shop, be it whatever you need. Get the most out of your dust collection system. So, if you have any questions about this, uh, shoot them to me in the comments. There's gonna be a lot of things that people don't agree with, which, whatever, this works for me. Um, but if you have any questions, if you like the way that something's ran, wondering how I did it, what fittings to use, things like that, check out the other video. I'll go over most of my fittings in it. And if you run into any issues, shoot me a message. Um, drop it down into the comments below. It was a beast figuring it out, but we got it. I hope this helps you guys out. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. We have plenty more to come now that we have all of this set up. We're going to start pumping out some crazy content, some crazy builds. So stay tuned, guys. Lots to come. Look forward to having you around. See ya.